Hi everybody, welcome to another video about word problems. So we're in this video we're going to take a look at what happens during a synthesis, decomposition, or oxidation combustion reactions. So I'm going to give you the beginnings of chemical reactions and you're going to have to figure out what's made and if the reaction will actually occur. The first step is always to figure out what type of reaction we're dealing with. Is it synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, or combustion? In this video, we're going to concentrate on three. We're going to talk about synthesis, decomposition, and oxidation and combustion. If you want to learn more about single replacement and double replacement reactions, check out part two of this video. So starting with synthesis, synthesis is always going to take the form A plus B. So element plus element gives you a compound. So for instance, nitrogen plus hydrogen goes to ammonia. Now remember, nitrogen and hydrogen are part of Brinkelhoff, so they come as diatomic elements, and then they'll make the compound ammonia. The exact opposite of that is called a decomposition reaction. And in a decomposition reaction, what you have is a compound, AB, falling apart into its elements, A and B. Now, although it might not be technically correct, in this class, I want you to take your decomposition reactions all the way back to their elements. Okay. In some cases, the elements themselves may oxidize or do other things, um, so it won't actually be correct, but for now and in this class, I want you to go straight back to the elements. So an example of that would be to, if we were to take, uh, oops, let's come back, uh, iron to sulfide and decompose it, into iron and sulfur. Now sulfur is an element that doesn't come as a diatomic element, it actually comes in sets of six, so that's why S6 is there. Okay, last type is called an oxidation or combustion reaction, and it's when you take a compound or an element and you react it with oxygen to form oxidized elements. So the oxygen actually rips apart whatever's there and gloms onto all the elements that are there. So an example, let's say we take our iron 2 sulfide again. When we react it with oxygen, we're going to get iron oxide. Now I just picked iron 2, or sorry, iron 3 oxide, um, but it could have been iron 2 oxide. And I made sulfur dioxide. So I took the iron and put oxygen on it, and I took the sulfur and I put oxygen on it. If your reactant is actually a carbohydrate or, um, sorry, just any hydrocarbon, then your products will be CO2 and H2O. Now you have to memorize that because it's just going to come back to haunt you if you don't. Okay, move it along. Once you know that what kind of reaction it is and you've taken a guess at the products, you have to make sure that you've actually written the products correctly. Make sure that the charges for each one of the ionic compounds are balanced out so that you have zero net charge. For synthesis, decomposition, and combustion reactions, you don't need to look anything up to figure out if they go. In my class, we're just going to assume synthesis, decomp, and combustion always occur. Okay. And then lastly, use coefficients to balance the equations. Remember, once you write the subscripts and the charges are balanced, don't change those. Okay. Example one, sodium carbonate is decomposed by heating. So I have sodium carbonate, that's the only thing I'm told about. Now, I am, I'm also given the dead giveaway that it is a decomposition reaction. So I can tell that this is decomp for, for two reasons. One, the problem tells you it's decomposed. And two, they only give you one reactant. If they only give you one reactant, there's only one thing for that reactant to do, and that is fall apart. Decomposition reactions always take the form A, B, C goes to A plus B plus C. So in this case, um, we're going to use our elements and we're going to take sodium, carbon, and oxygen and take them down to sodium, carbon, and oxygen. Now, oxygen is part of Brinkhoff, so it will become a diatomic molecule. Um, Oops, and then let's go black here. So let's try and balance this thing. I have two sodiums here, so I'm going to need a two here. I have one carbon and one carbon. We're fine. Uh, I have three oxygens and two oxygens. So in order to solve that, I never like odd numbers. So I'm going to double this one, like so, and that'll actually give me four 
uh, sodium, so excuse my cheesy four there. Uh, I now have two carbons, and I have six oxygens. Two times three is six, so I'm going to need three oxygens like so. Oops, let's go back. Um, but really, this reaction doesn't occur in nature. Uh, oxygen is very reactive product and what it's going to do is then go into a secondary reaction in which the oxygen oxidizes both the sodium and the carbon. So if you wrote this, you followed my instructions, that's really good, but let's take a look at what really happens here. Um, the sodium, the carbon, and the oxygen are going to oxidize and I'm going to be left with sodium oxide and carbon dioxide. Again, carbon and oxygen bonding is going to give me a carbon dioxide and sodium and oxygen bonding, I have to make sure the total charge is equal to zero. Oxygen takes a minus two, sodium takes a plus one, so I need two sodiums there. Um, so the real reaction is uh, sodium carbonate actually goes to sodium oxide and carbon dioxide. So let's try balancing that one. I've got two sodiums and I've got two sodiums. I've got one carbon and one carbon and I have three oxygens here, one oxygen and two oxygens gives me three oxygens. This thing is balanced right from the get-go. Example problem two. Let's say I had a pile of aluminum strips and I allow, I allow them to sit there in some oxygen gas and react. So here's what I have. Aluminum plus oxygen goes to something. Now, people often get freaked out by the strips here, like, oh, how do I do the aluminum strips part? Well, it's just aluminum. Later on, we'll talk about how you could put a subscript here to let people know that it was solid aluminum and that the, the oxygen was gaseous aluminum. Uh, but for now, let's just concentrate on predicting the products. So aluminum plus oxygen um, looks like a synthesis reaction. Uh, because I've got two elements coming together and they're probably going to make one thing um, in the form A plus B, element A, element B going to compound AB. It could also be called a combustion reaction because I've got an element plus oxygen going to that element oxidized. So I'm going to have aluminum plus oxygen goes to aluminum oxide. But you will remember from chemistry earlier this year that aluminum takes a plus three charge and oxygen takes a minus two charge so ALO cannot possibly be the correct formula for that so we're gonna have to make sure that the charges cancel out and we'll be left with AL2O3 so let's try and balance this one um, again I've got an odd number of O's here and an even here whenever I have that I double my odd number so that way, because an odd number doubled is an even number, and I just like balancing even numbers. It seems easier to me. So if I have six O's, I'm going to need three there. That'll give me six O's, and two times two aluminums will be four aluminums. So my balanced equation, four aluminums plus three oxygen, gives me two aluminum oxide. Example problem three. Say we take cellulose. Cellulose takes the formula C6H10O5, and actually it could be any multiple of this. I just picked the simplest one. So we're going to go with C6H10O5, and it's burned in air. Burned in air. That's code. So burned in air is code for combustion or oxidation reaction. You're going to see this a lot. So we've got a compound plus oxygen goes to each of the individual elements oxidized. So if we have this, cellulose plus oxygen, we're going to form carbon dioxide and water. As I said in the start of this video, whenever you have carbon and hydrogen as your reactants, uh, carbon dioxide and water will be your products because they are the products of a complete combustion. If you had incomplete combustion, then you might make other things like carbon monoxide or smoke or soot or other things, but chemically they're hard to deal with, so we always do complete combustion with carbon dioxide and water. Here's our unbalanced reaction. Uh, cellulose plus oxygen goes to carbon dioxide and water. And let's try and balance it. So I have an odd number here, which I would normally try and get rid of, but uh, I've solved this one already, so I know that I don't have to. And the fact that I have oxygen in two separate places, 
um, means that it's going to be more complex. And that in these kinds of problems, you should just start out balancing them and see how they move. So if I have C6, C6 that means I'm going to need a 6 here. Now I've got 6 C's and 6 C's. I've got 10 H's on the left. So I'm going to need 10 H's here, which means I will need a 5, um, which gives me 5 O's and 12 O's. So we've got 12 O's and 5 O's for a total of 17 O's. Now, over here, I've already got 5 O's. So I need 17, but I already have 5 there. So I'm going to need 12 total O's, which means this is going to need to be a 6. Okay, so I have 17 O's on both sides and we are in good shape. So try these two problems on your own. Uh, pause the video and work them out. You've got isopropyl alcohol, C3H8O, and that's can, gonna, going to combust in air. And you've got a chunk of lithium metal that is left on a table that's exposed to the air. Pause the video, give them a try. Okay, here's how this one's going to work out. Isopropanol is going to combust in air, that's code for reacts with oxygen, um, and it's going to take the form compound plus oxygen goes to element oxidized plus to element oxidized, and you know that since C and H are my reactants, I'm going to make carbon dioxide and water, uh, and my final balanced equation, two alcohols plus nine oxygen go to six carbon dioxides and eight waters. The second problem, you have a chunk of lithium metal that's left on a lab table. This one is going to look like this, lithium plus oxygen. It could be a synthesis or an oxidation reaction. Um, so either way, it's going to take the form A plus B goes to compound or A plus oxygen goes to compound. Um, and here's what we start out with. So you would think lithium plus oxygen goes to lithium oxide, but the charges are not balanced. Lithium takes plus one, oxygen takes a minus two. So we're going to need to cancel that, those out by doing lithium plus oxygen goes to Li2O. And then balancing it, you'll get four lithiums plus oxygen goes to two lithium oxide. Good luck. Check in with the next video for single and double replacement reactions, and I'll see you later.